I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Mount Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And in this episode of our continuing series, The Seven Habits of the Highly Effective Milking Routines, we're going to be focusing on Habit 1. Habit 1 starts before the cows ever enter the milking parlor. And that habit is that cows are calm and clean before the milking process begins. I'm going to start by discussing the importance of cleanliness. Cleanliness of the area that the cows live in, such as the free stalls, cleanliness of the cows themselves, and cleanliness of the entry lanes or even pastures that cows walk through will impact both the speed that cows get milked and the rate that new mastitis infections develop. Cows that are dirty take longer to milk. Cows that are dirty develop more new mastitis infections. And co when cows are dirty, the milking technicians have reduced parlor throughput. There is a tremendous amount of scientific data that shows that exposure to bacteria in the housing areas of the cow will result in the development of an increased amount of mastitis infections. And this is especially true for mastitis infections that are caused by environmental pathogens such as Klebsiella. The group at Ohio State demonstrated back in the 1980s that as you increase the number of colonies of bacteria in the bedding that the cows lay on, you will increase the amount of episodes of clinical mastitis that the cows experience. When we look at the housing area of the cow, we need to look at the type of bedding. And we know that organic bedding sources, such as straw or shavings, or things like biosolids, have more moisture and they contain more gram-negative bacteria. There's plenty of evidence that shows that the rate of clinical mastitis will increase as we increase the number of colonies of these bacteria in that bedding. So one of our critical control points before we enter the milking parlor is to make sure that the cows are lying in a clean, dry area and that the udders are visually clean. Keeping the udder clean is a critical control point for minimizing the amount of mastitis. And fortunately, we have some very effective tools that we can use to assess the cleanliness of the udder. In one study, we enrolled 1,250 cows on eight commercial dairy farms. We visited these farms five times over a 10-month period. During our visits, we used our udder hygiene scoring chart to assess the cleanliness of the udder, and then we collected milk samples and somatic cell counts for these cows to assess the relationship between udder hygiene and the development of subclinical mastitis. In our project where we were assessing the relationship between udder hygiene and the development of mastitis, we used this simple chart which is freely downloadable from our website. The scale we use ranges from one, very clean, to four, very dirty. Scores one and scores two we would consider clean. Scores three and score four are udders that are simply too dirty. After we took all of the data back to our laboratory, we assessed the relationship between the various udder hygiene scores and the amount of subclinical intramammary infections occurring in these cows. And as you can easily see in this chart, as the udders go from a hygiene of one to hygiene of two to hygiene of three to hygiene of four, the amount of subclinical mastitis infections increases. Our recommendations is to maintain udder hygiene scores of one and two on at least 80% of the cows. The other aspect of the first habit of a highly effective milking routine is that cows are calm. When we think about the milking process, we know it's dependent on milk letdown. And milk letdown is dependent on the release of oxytocin from the pituitary gland in the brain. 
most of the time when we get a disturbance of that milk letdown, it's related to what we call central inhibition. That central inhibition means simply that the cows are too nervous to milk. And there's research that has shown that the release of adrenaline or epinephrine, this fight or flight hormone, the release of that hormone within 30 minutes of milking will interfere with the process of milk letdown. Now we can tell when we go to a farm how calm the cows are. Calm cows are not frightened of humans. They'll let people approach them very readily. Calm cows do not all jump up when the milking technicians enter a freestall area. Calm cows readily enter milking uh, parlors and they do not normally defecate during milking. If there is an excessive amount of defecation during milking, it's because the cows are nervous and an excessive rate of milking of defecation during milking would be more than five defecations per 100 cows milked. It's also important to recognize that the milking technicians, the cow handlers, should be very patient with the cows. Cows should not be struck, they should not be prodded, they should not be chased by either people or dogs, and they should not be spoken to loudly. It's also important that we don't take things and, and make loud noises by, by hitting the equipment because loud noises scare cows. There are a couple of interesting studies that have looked at the relationship between cow handler attitude, cow behavior, and milking performance. One of the most interesting was done by Hemsworth and published in the Journal of Animal Science in the year 2000. In this study, they assessed workers on 66 Australian dairy farms. What they found was that the attitude of the cow handlers toward the cows did influence the amount of negative handling events that those cows experienced. When the cow handlers were rough with the cows, they saw more um, uh, movement of the cows, increased kicking during milking, and actually reduced milk production. Even more interesting than the original study that was conducted in Australia was the subsequent study that the same group conducted. In the subsequent study, this research group evaluated the effect of training cow handlers on both their own behavior and then ultimately on the behavior and milk yield of the cows. They divided the original 66 herds into two groups. About half of the herds, they did nothing, no training of the cow handlers. And the other group of herds, they performed a training program that was really focused on teaching the cow handlers proper cow handling and cow behavior. The outcome that they measured were changes in the human behavior relative to how they treated the cows and then changes in the cow behavior. The interesting thing was when they compared the control herds to the training herds, it was very clear that the training program was effective. In the trained herds, they had 50% less negative interactions between humans and cows. And as a result of that reduction in negative interactions, the milk yield in the herds that had trained handlers increased by about 5%. Training is so important for both our cow handlers and for our milking technicians. So the first habit of the highly successful milking routine is that cows should be calm and clean before milking. Cleanliness is important to reduce the new infection rates and cleanliness is a result of attention to proper housing and handling of the cows. Calmness is a result of proper training of people on how to properly interact with cows. If you're looking for a good resource on how to teach people how to properly handle cows, there's a good resource at www.dairystockmanship.com. Lots of information there on how to properly handle cows.
in the next episode of our milking series, we're going to discuss the second habit of highly successful milking routines, and that's how to properly group cows to reduce the probability of spreading mastitis among the cows.